Well, we're just uh, about to go live. Another 30 seconds, and I guess, well, we're live already. Um, we're just waiting for some um, people to come and join us. And um, here we have Vanessa. I can see Vanessa from here, and uh, we're going to wait a few more people, but we'll start in a moment. And we're going to have a wonderful time in prayer. And... Um, and I believe God for a miracle. If you want to, if you want to send me a little, I have my laptop with me to my left and trying something different. So if you are, uh, if you want to send me a little prayer request, and uh, if I'm able to read it, that's wonderful. But we're gonna pray for everybody, everybody here tonight, and um, and there is power in prayer. So I'm gonna. I'm going to share a couple of scriptures before we prayed, and um, I did get some uh, prayer requests, and um, so we're going to just wait here. Praise God! Aren't you excited that Jesus Christ is Lord during the times that we're facing in the world today? And I tell you, I'm so glad I got saved. I don't know what day you got saved. But, you know, as people are coming in, um, when do you thank God? I was saved August 18th, 1980. I tell you. So um, I thank the Lord for that. So, uh, you know, I want everybody to thank God. Let, let's come into this room. We're going to open up in prayer in a moment. But let's come into this room with thanksgiving and saying, God, thank you for saving me. And give that date. I'm sure that most of you uh, remember the date and where you were when you really had that encounter with God of the true salvation from the Lord. So uh, I thank the Lord, August 18, 1980. I tell you, I remember I called my mother and I said, Mom, he says, I'm a Christian now. And she goes, oh, you've been a Christian all your life. Uh, because, you know, they, she thought that Christianity or being a Christian is just believing in God. And I said, no, Mom. I says, you know, God speaks to me. And right away she thought that I flipped. Anyway, so, but uh, then she was able to see how uh, God met with me. And I didn't flip. I flipped in the right direction. And then uh, my, um, my father got saved. My mother got saved and healed. Uh, my sister, my brother-in-law, my nephews, my niece. And they all know the Lord. And that's, and that's what happens when, when God comes into somebody's home. So anyway, I'm going to start now, and we're just going to open up. I'm going to have a couple of scriptures to share with you, just to pump us up in the right direction. And I thank all of you. I can see some of you from here. Uh, and I, I've been, I bought a, a, a mic so that we can have better sound, but I was having some problems. So I'm going to try it on, when, on Sunday. So uh, God bless you, everybody. And we're going to start, Father God, right now. We commit this time into your hands. We submit ourselves to you and we resist the powers of darkness away from our lives, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, you are welcome into this place here. You are welcome into every house. You are welcome into every living room. You know everybody that will come in now and will come in later. We pray, God, that you will be with them, even though they might listen to it later. And I pray that your anointing and your power will be so felt, O oh God, but God, whatever your presence is, there is healing, there is deliverance. And I pray to God that we will experience something wonderful today, that you will heal bodies, meet needs, give direction, give wisdom, encourage people and all of that, especially in the days that we live in. So Father God, we just commit this time into your hands and, uh, and Lord, let your angels encamp around us today and let the spirit of the living God speak through this Fellow right here, Father God, I am nothing without you, and I will never be anything without you. Nothing, uh, man has nothing good in themselves but that which comes from above. So every little bit of good that I may have in me, oh God, it, it, it comes from you. And I thank you for transforming my life. I thank you, Father, for saving me. And Lord, I thank you for saving many people. And God, we are about, Lord, to... Uh, to pray, and uh, we ask, Lord, that you will direct our prayers, and, Lord, that you will answer them as well. And thank you, Father, that you are answering prayers all over the world about the economy and the virus and everything else. But what are you saying in the midst of all of this? That's what counts. 
So in Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Amen. So let me get here. Uh, I thank you for coming, and um, I believe that we're going to, I mean, I already feel the presence of God here, so I'm, I'm expecting a lot of things, and I want you to expect a lot of things as well. I wrote a few notes over here, and then the Lord took me to a scripture that I want to read, and then, um, and then I want to encourage uh, some people uh, to do so. And then uh, before I do that, Sunday, oh my God. You know, the first Sunday, it was powerful, amazing. I wanted to cancel that, that service after. I wanted to delete the posting, but God said, no, that's my word. And then uh, last Sunday, my, 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 man, was it ever powerful what God is revealing to, um, to us. Uh, because, you know, all, everything is new. Two weeks ago was new to me. I never done that. Uh, those scriptures that came, Joshua 1, uh, 6, 1 and 2, and uh, Isaiah 26, 20 and 21, all of that. I mean, it was just an eye-opener, and even last week. But this Sunday, oh, my God, I tell you, God gave me a few days ago, God gave me something that uh, is, is going to blow your mind. I'm sure you never heard that before, but it will make sense for the times that we live in right now. And, um, and then last night, as I was going to sleep, I was just maybe five, ten minutes into, uh, into going to sleep, the Spirit of God just came and uh, unveiled some truth right now uh, uh, that will make sense. And it's all about what he's done, what he's uh, doing during this time uh, that we have being called to be at home and to be safe and all of that. Uh, God knew about this long ago, but I'm saying two things that I'm going to reveal to you from the mouth of God, and I, and I already typed up all the scriptures. It's about 90% scripture, but the two things is very prophetically um, for us today. Because you see, in the time of need, in the time of chaos, men of God... We must go to God and get a word from the Lord. Amen? We can't keep preaching the same things that we've been preaching before. I mean, we got to get a word from the Lord. The Bible says that the spirit that lives in us is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, will guide us to all truth, and will tell us what is yet to come. So, you know, men of God out there got to have the word of the Lord and give us some understanding. So, you, you know, pray for me. I can't tell you right now. I only told one person. I didn't even tell my wife about it. But I told one person, and, uh, but, uh, you know, pray for me that the Lord will work it through me. And I believe that it's going to be bong and knock out. And I tell you for Jesus. And uh, so do that. So all over the world, people are beginning to call on God now. We're going to talk about that. You know, uh, it's amazing how, you know, shelves at Walmart. And a friend of mine was telling me that even on Amazon now, the... Uh, uh, a lot of the Bibles being purchased, purchased, and a lot of them are not really available. Uh, so, I mean, uh, what a wonderful thing that so sometimes hard times uh, calls for something like this. That, you know, it, isn't it amazing that when we go through hard times, that's when we get closer to God, and then when things get better, we leave them. So, but I, I thank the Lord that this is happening. You know, how many will stay with Him when all, when, once all of this passes? Yeah. You know, that's the question, but that's our prayer, that people will stick with God and stay with God. So all over the world, people are beginning to call on God. we got to thank God for that. Backsliders are coming back to God. <laughs> Imagine that. Backsliders, because they know God. They know the Word of God. And, you know, those that are in sin and all of that, I believe that uh, during this time, you know, nothing is guaranteed. Anything can happen at this time. So I know that backsliders are coming back to God, and, and that's a good thing. You know, we're getting our, our hearts right with the Lord, so that way anything can happen. You know, I don't know everything, all the details. Every day is new to us, you know, but any day the rapture can take place. Any day, you know, you can go. You know, Billy Graham said that the end of the world for someone is not when the end of the world comes. You know, that, that, that will take place for everybody. But I'm saying the end of the world for anybody is the moment that we die, right? Right. So we have to be ready for the Lord because, you know, what? Uh, why put all our efforts to live here on earth for 90 years, 100 years, 120 years and, and, and miss out in heaven? You know, we got to put our treasures in heaven. So anyway, listen to this. People are praying for this virus. 
and economy all over the world. And, uh, and, you know, and you know what? His will will be done. Listen to this. His will will be done. His will will be done. Everybody's praying about it, right? And uh, God hearing the prayers. And uh, will God remove this virus? I'm sure he will. Uh, will God help us with the economy all over the world? I'm sure he will. Uh, I don't have all the details, but I know one thing. His will will be done. And that's the reason that God's people got to get along with God and find out what his will is. So his will will be done. And our job is to stay with him. Listen to this. To stay with him. Return to him. And thank God that he will answer our prayers according to his will. That's amazing. So we got to stay with him. We got to return to him. Because I'm sure that we all... Uh, failing him in somewhere in our lives, right? So uh, maybe we're not good in finances, maybe we're not good in our marriage, maybe we're not good here, maybe we're not good in business, maybe we're lazy, maybe we work too hard, maybe we, we give more time to sports than to God and all of that. So e every one of us has some areas in our life that we need to fix. So we got to stay with him, return to him, and pray according to his will. Amen? So uh, I want to just read a couple of scriptures, and one of them comes in Second uh, Chronicles chapter 20, the story of Jehoshaphat. I, I want to concentrate on just one thing. I'm not going to talk too much about this, but I want to read the prayer of Jehoshaphat. Imagine all his armies were coming against him, and uh, I mean, he knew that he was... Uh, you know, a Spanish omelette. I mean, uh, he was not matched against the armies that were coming against him, but he had someone that was with him. And look at the prayer that he prayed. You know, a lot of times, you know, we, we, we don't know how to pray, but you know, the, the, the smartest way to pray is begin your prayer life acknowledging who God really is. Because, you know, then your focus is not on the problem that you're praying, but is in praying to the one that can answer our prayers. And look what he says. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. And I'm sorry that I'm using the Amplified Bible. Uh, but he's in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 6. He says, O Lord God, our Father, you are you not God in heaven? So he's... he's re He's refreshing himself and saying, aren't you the God of heaven? Aren't you the big, big God in this world? You know, and that's a good way to come into our prayer, you know, because we see the mountains. We see, you know, I wake up every day and I say, somebody wake me up. You know, it's like living in a dream. And you all feel the same way on Groundhog Day, you know. I mean, we go through the same thing every day and all of that. And we got, I, I tell you, my skin is beginning to fall off how, much, uh, how many times I have uh, washed my hands. Amen. And then we have to be careful, the knobs and all of these things, where we go and all of that, because we have to be responsible. But he says, aren't you the God in heaven and you... Do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nations? He rules over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand. And there is no one able to take a stand against you. Come on, that's a good, that's a good way to start our prayer meeting tonight. Amen. Aren't you the God of heaven? And you're the big God. There is no other God by you. You know, and nobody can stand against you and all of that. And, and you are for me. And if God is for me, who can be against me? Man, that's powerful, right? You know, I, I feel bad for people. And I know that there are probably people coming, uh, coming to hear this uh, today and the days to come that don't know the Lord, that, that, are, that are, you know, to them church is, uh, is not for them and all of these things. But now everybody's thinking about church and that, you know, but don't, you know, it's okay for you to come in your biggest need of your life. But I'm saying, come on, you know, don't go back after uh, to go back to your old ways. That's so stupid. You know, it's, you know, the Bible talks about a dog returning to his own vomit. Imagine that. So the dog vomits, and then he goes back and eats what he vomited. And that's what a lot of people do. They come to God in the time of need, and then they go back to the old ways, you know, to be miserable, to be lost, to be broken, to be hurt, and all of that. And I believe that we need to make a stand for Christ and come to him once and for all. So anyway, he says, O our God, do you not drive out the inhabitants of the lands be uh, of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of your friends 
of your friend Abraham? Uh, let's skip verse 9. If evil comes on us or the sword of judgment. Listen. You know, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I have another scripture for tonight. It says, uh, it says if evil comes on us or the sword of judgment or a plague or famine. Oh, my God. Is that something uh, good or what? We will stand. Listen to this. We will stand before this house and before you for your name and your presence is in this house. Oh, my God. I don't know if you're getting it. He says, you know, you know, in the days that are evil, in the days that the sword of judgment might be upon us, or a plague, or a famine, you know, you know, you know, famine, economy, and all of that, we will stand before this house and uh, and before you, for your name and your presence is in this house, and we will cry out to you in our distress, and we will do that in a moment. We will cry it out in our distress and you will hear and listen to the best part. You will hear and you will save us. Who? God's people. Those that abide under the shelter of the Almighty. He will rescue us. He will protect us. He will, he will cover us with his wings and, and power and the angels will encamp around us. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know why anybody would choose to be somewhere else but in the presence of God. Amen. So, and you will hear and you will save us. Do you want to be saved? You want to be protected through this time or you want to be freaking out every day with fear and not knowing if, if you caught it when you went out to the store or when you went to work or whatever or when you put some gas in the car and all of that. What a way to live. You know, but, but what a way to live if our trust is on God. Hallelujah. I'll skip to verse 11. It says, here they are rewarding us by coming to drive us out of your possession which you have given us as an inheritance. Verse 12, O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we are powerless, listen to this, we are powerless against this great multitude which is coming against us. You see, a lot of times, you know, we get saved and we, and we serve the Lord and we think that we're powerful. You know, we are powerless without Him. And in order for us to be powerful in him, we have to be in him. Amen. A lot of people, you know, when I first became a Christian, you know, I said, okay, Lord, where do you want me to go? Go. Where do you want me to go? And I will, I will go wherever he wants me to go. After I grew up, I became a more mature Christian. Then I said, okay, God, come on, come with me. Imagine that. <laughs> Come with me. Why? Because I got a taste of the power. I got the taste of the anointing. And now I began to do my own thing. But, you know, we have to get back to the basics, especially in the time that we're living in right now, that we are powerless without him. We, and we are no match against the enemies. But with him, we are more than conquerors through him to love us. Amen? So that's the reason that we got to stay with him. Verse 12. O our God, we will not judge them, for we are powerless against this great multitude which is coming against us, and we don't know what to do. Right now, a lot of people, even Christians, even pastors, even leaders, they don't know if they're coming or going. I call them the Shalom group. You know, they, they, they don't know if they're coming or going. They don't know what to do in this hour. But look what Jehoshaphat said. But our eyes are on you. Oh my God, what, a, what an encouragement as we come into prayer. But our eyes are upon you, O oh God. I read all of that just to get to that scripture right there. So all Judah is stood before the Lord, their infants, their wives, and their children. And in the midst of all of that, listen, I'm not going to get in. I'm not going to continue that because I can go in there for an hour and I don't want to do that. That's not the purpose tonight, but I'm encouraging you right now with the word of God. Then when that happened, the Holy Spirit came and spoke. You see, in the time of chaos, we need to hear from the Lord. And that's why I'm really tough on preachers. You know, that I, 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 I don't see them going and getting a word of the Lord to bring something to, to the people of God. And we need that today in this hour. So anyway, so l listen to this. First John chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. 
I'm going to give a challenge here and then we're going to pray. So be patient with me because I want to just uh, perk you up uh, in your faith because you need to know that you need to know that uh, God answers prayers in the midst of what we're facing because a lot of you have a lot of uncertainties. Yes, you have faith, but you still, you know, worry about the future. Some of you probably lost your job. Probably some of you, you don't know where your next meal is going to come from and all of that. Listen, when you abide in Him, God will move supernaturally to His people. God will meet all of our needs in the, in the midst of famine, in the midst of war, in the midst of judgment, in the midst of a plague, in the midst of anything like that. God will meet our needs. But we have to know how, how we're going to do it, okay? It says, it says here in uh, verse 13 of 1 John chapter 5, it says, This thing have I written unto you who believe in the name of the Son of God, which represents... All that Jesus Christ is and thus, so that you will know with settled and absolute knowledge that you already have eternal life. You know, what, what a wonderful scripture there that you already know that you have eternal life. You see, a lot of people, you know, they're saying, you know, am I saved? Am I this? Am I that? You say, you got to come to a, a maturity in your life that you must know that you already have eternal life. So let's go to grade two and there three and four and let's begin to grow uh, in the things of God. He says, um, and this is the remarkable degree of confidence which we as believers are entitled to have before him that if we ask, listen, if we ask anything according to what? According to his will, he that is consistent with his plan and purpose. Oh, hallelujah, come on. So if we ask anything according to his will, his plan, and his purpose, he hears us. Do you want God to hear you today? So, you know, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something so powerful on Sunday. Because God is secluding us to a place that we should have been before all of this happened. And that is in His presence. In His presence where we can find His will. Amen? Because God is not mute. God is not deaf. Right? But we must, we have the Holy Spirit in us, and He's more than willing to uh, reveal to us uh, the future, the steps that we ought to take, because it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Amen. He will direct our path. He will go before us and make all the crooked place straight. Everything is in the word of God. But you see, we've been so busy. We've been so distracted. We've been so, you know, out of place that, you know, we, we haven't been able to find his will. You see, everybody that finds his will every day of, his li of their life, all their prayers will be answered. Because you won't be praying for something that you don't know. You won't be praying for something that is not God's will or purpose, as it says over here. You see, because you're going to want to, if you're mature, if you're a mature Christian, you're going to want to pray uh, according to His will, because when you pray according to His will, He will hear you. And if He hears you, then He will answer you. We're going to read that in a moment. So He says, you know, how in the world do we come to the place of... of um, of uh, knowing God in that in that way, I'm glad you ask. You know, stop watching your your uh, movies. Stop uh, gossiping around there. Stop spending uh, time uh, that you're not getting anything that is productive in our lives and all of that. We're so distracted. Uh, you know, this is the time. This is a time for us to be refocused. To focus our life now in what is most important because all of us were facing death right now. All of us, believe it or not, we're all facing death, including myself. I can die today. Maybe from the virus or not the virus. Maybe somebody shoots me. Maybe I get into a car accident. So, you know, we, we, have, to, we have to do that. We have to treasure how we spend our time before God because God, the good news is this, that God is more than willing to reveal truth to you and me and to show us what his will is. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. 
Amen. He's willing to do that. But how in the world can he do that when we're so busy? So busy trying to impress people out there. Amen. But let me finish over here. So he says, when we pray according to his will, he will hear us. His will, his plan, his purpose, right? And if we know for a fact, as indeed we do, that he hears us and listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know, we settle an absolute knowledge, come on, that we have granted to us the request which we have asked of him. Wow, what a power of a scripture. So if we learn, you know, I'm going to go back to that statement. You say, how in the world did I get to that? Stop wasting stupid time watching stupid movies uh, and their stupid uh, uh, conversations that are not getting you anywhere. Uh, stop uh, wasting time in stupid relationships that you know is not good in anywhere. And you, the only reason that you're in that relationship is because oh, so, you know, I need some, uh, I need companionship. I need a, I need a little hug, I need a little kiss, or whatever. And and, and we waste time in nonsense, not knowing the will, the plan, and the purpose of God, that we, 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 we miss out knowing His will. So when we pray, we pray hoping that He hears us. Imagine that. You know, when I pray, I, I say, God, reveal your will for my life, and during this time that we're facing, speak to me so I can pray effectively, and if I'm going to preach your word, I'm gonna re if I'm going to release something to your people, I want to release something that is from heaven, something that is going to steer us up, something that is going to shake us up, and something that is going to make sense. Oh, hallelujah, and I know that the word of God makes sense. Amen? So in, in this way, we have to know his will. And I can go on about his will. He says, our Father, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Amen? It's all about the will of God be done. God's will must be done. God saved you. God knew you in your mother's womb. God had a plan for you. God had a wonderful plan for you to prosper you, to, to uh, I'm talking about not only financially, but prosper you physically, and spiritually, emotionally, in every way. And God had jobs and success and all of these things. And the only thing he was asking is that your, his will comes into your life. So your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. We all know that You're, and, and all of that. So how do we get... The will of God. And I'll close with this and we're going to go into prayer. How do we get to that place of his will in us? Listen, I want you to study this scripture. I mentioned it to our school a few times. And I'm going to mention it to you as well. And that's in Psalm 37 verse 4. And listen to this. Delight yourself in the Lord. Mama. Delight. Oh, he's the love of my life. I'm going to live for him. I'm going to die for him. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you. Who? The one that delights in the Lord. He will give you the desires and the petitions of your heart. So those that don't know God and you're listening to me. You got religion. Religion is not going to get you anywhere. Religion is going to last only by the time you're in church. By the time you go out of church, you're already thinking about your bills. You're thinking about your miserable life and all of that. I mean, what a life to live. And then you don't want to really get, give your life to the Lord because you're choosing that miserable life instead of pressing in. Remember, there's two ways to struggle. To struggle without God and to struggle with God. You struggle without God, you get worse every day. Every day you get in worse and worse and worse. When you suffer for God, you get in better and better and better. Though the outer man perishes, the inner man is renewed day by day. I'm a better man today than I was yesterday. Hallelujah. So how do we get into that place of delight when we delight ourselves? When we are, listen, I'm going to give you the interpretation that I heard many years ago. The Lord took me five hours out of the place where I was living. And I drove there and I walked into a small little church that had maybe about 30 people. And God spoke to me about this verse. And he said this, delight yourself in the Lord. 
That means this, when you are soft and pliable in his will, that means obedient to the word, whatever you know is his word, and whatever you know what is right, do what is right. When he says, when you, when you are soft and pliable in his will, listen to this, he will place his desire in you and he will fulfill them. Oh my God. Imagine that. So that means that your prayers become prayers according to his will. Oh my God. Oh hallelujah. Let that sink in. Come on. I, I think that if you really get in this, study the word of God. And if you really get in this, Go into your prayer closet, stay there for a while, and say, Lord, thy will be done. Reveal your will. Let my life be the flow of your will. Because if I'm soft and pliable in your will, you will place the right desire within my heart, and you will fulfill them. You know, how I, how I ended up to be in this seat over here when I was in another province doing okay, I had my family there, I had everything there, I knew everything there, and God could have used me there, but God brought me here. Why? Because as I was delighting myself in the Lord, the Lord placed His will in us, and He says, I'm bringing you to this city. I want you to make this city your home. I had no job, I had no ministry. I, 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 my, my wife didn't have no job, no ministry, and people owe me money, and I didn't have the funds, I didn't have anything to be where I am today. And, uh, but I felt that God was placing His will in my, in my life, and I said to my wife and family, I says, I don't know, but God wants us here. And, 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 and I don't know, I don't have the details why, but God wants us here. Why? Because His will in me became my will on earth. Hallelujah. Why? Because I chose to delight myself in the Lord. That's the answer to our prayers. If we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, he will grant to us that which we ask. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If I delight myself in the Lord, he will place the right desire within my heart and he will fulfill them. I don't know about you, but that's Bible. That's teaching. That's, that's meat. You know, if we all Christians, you know, if we all Christians, you know, we had that truth, we wouldn't be calling everybody to help us in all of these things. We will be mature. And this is discipleship. Oh, hallelujah. So anyway, uh, we're going to go to prayer. You know, I hope you got something out of this. And Lord, bless your people. I pray, God, that they will delight in you. You know, if you're not a Christian, if you're a backslider, if you're, um, if you're uh, seeking God and, and, and you have religion, oh, religion is dead. But Jesus Christ is alive. He's, he's alive. So I want you right now, whatever you are, says, God, I'm tired of being Lord of my life. I'm tired of being the owner of my life and my future. I give it up. I surrender to you. Come into my life, oh God. Lord, I turn from my wicked ways. Lord, I'm going to choose your will. I'm going to get into the word of God. I'm going to choose your will. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find your will. And I, and I want your will to be my will as I walk here on earth. That I may be blessed and reap everything that God has promised. And that heaven has for all those that serve him. And all those that are his. Come on, cry unto God. He says, call upon the Lord. Today is the day of salvation. Cry down to him. Say, God, save me. Save me from the misery that I'm in. Lord, I give you my home. I give you my future. I give you my past. I give you my family. I give you, I give you, I give you. I'm, I, I didn't do a good job without you. And religion did not help me. Man will not help me. But God, you will come through for me. Hallelujah. Sorry, God, for, for failing you. God, sorry for walking away from you. Lord, forgive me for all of these things. Oh, my God. God, the power of God is in this place. God wants to save you, set you free, and give you a new beginning. The Bible says, for those that are in Christ, they're new creatures. The old has passed. Behold, the new has come. Come on, you got a new life. 
You got a new beginning. And that's, that's what you have to grab. Religion is dead. Dead, dead, dead. And you want to come here on Sunday, you want to hear some meat. We're going to have some T-bone steak, I tell you. And a French salad. We're going to eat, hallelujah, some spiritual food this coming Sunday. That is going to revolutionize your life and set you loose and apart from the things of this world that you and me and everybody's facing today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I don't know. Let me see if uh, anybody. Anyway, you know what? There's people that could be sending some uh, prayer requests, but I already have some prayer requests. Uh, you know, I want to pray for Rick in Mississauga. Jack from Ontario. People in Ontario are calling me. They're watching this thing. They're, they're, they're saying, wow. You know, some of them, they know me and they say, wow, we thought that you're dead. God is still using you. Hallelujah. Thank God that God is a God of resurrection. Hallelujah. So Jack from Ontario healed his husband. Uh, we prayed for them, uh, for him uh, last week. And guess what? He, he was in the hospital. Now he's back home. Hallelujah. Recuperating there. We'll continue to pray for him. And uh, Judy and Ken, I saw them this week. Helen and Ruth, wonderful people. Friends, uh, I want to pray for the friends of the School of Discipleship, many to mention. Uh, Paulette, uh, Blair and Paulette, friends of mine, and, uh, and uh, she was supposed to have an um, uh, uh, operation in her hip, and now they postponed that, and, and she's in a lot of pain, you know, but I know a God that can heal. Um, a hip problem, Taylor. A uh, young fellow, you know, just going through a real hard time. He needs restoration in his family, or, uh, in his family, restoration of family situation. Naaman, uh, yeah, from the Bible in Ontario. Uh, people's jobs. I'm going to pray for people's jobs, your jobs, to be secure for those that lost a job, that lost a job for, for God to provide and give you direction in this time. Uh, salvation uh, of your loved one, of yourself. And those that have been infected by the virus, uh, you know, we need to pray for them. We have, what, 147 now in our region, you know, all across Canada. I don't know, over uh, 8,000, something like that. We need to pray for that. That uh, just because you see those numbers doesn't mean that they're going to be, uh, uh, that they're going to die. You know, 1% to 3% might die, might die. But, you know, you have to look at the, uh, at the stats of how many, especially here in um, Nova Scotia, over 6,000 already are uh, negative, you know, over 6,000. And we don't see that on the news. You know? The only thing we see is, oh, we add another five. We add another 20. We add another, but we don't, we, they're not telling us how many they're releasing already that, uh, with a negative um, test, right? So anyway, so uh, we're going to pray for that, okay? Um, church, churches, leaders, and for people to return to God. What a time for us to be preaching the gospel and for people to return to Almighty God. Hallelujah. And then, you know, I'm, be I'm believing God. I'm going to be praying every Sunday and every Wednesday for mental illness, marriages, and for those that are single, uh, that God will give you a, a, a powerful mate, a lady of God or a man of God in the name of Jesus. We're going to continue to pray for Canada, for Italy, for the USA, for Iran, the UK. I mean, uh, the US is just going nuts over there. I feel sorry for, the, for what's happening over there. And um, Italy, uh, you know, China now is coming out of it and, and all of that. And please don't get involved in all of these theories. You know, I put a post in today, you know, that we have so many theories, you know, and I put a note here. Many theories uh, today we hear. Stop, you know, with these theories, you know, uh, but I like to stick to the one that I know, and that is prayer and finding his will in it. You know, I see a lot of postings about this theory and that theory, and a lot of them could be true, could be whatever. But you know what? I want to get into on my knees, and I want to find out what the will of God is for my life and what I need to do and what I need to be, to be doing. And that is all of us is for us to be ready. To, to whatever can happen. Amen. But I'm saying don't get caught up in the theories. Get caught up in, the, in your knees. Because we're so distracted in social media. And listening to this. And listening to that. All this and that. And blah, blah, blah. And we get so distracted from what God wants. So anyway. So I, I, want, you, I, wanna, I want you to invite me into your uh, living room. Whatever you may be. And uh, we're going to pray right now. 
We're going to ask God to uh, meet the people's life here, and, um, and I'm going to go through this list, and, uh, and, and I'm going to be praying for you as well. So uh, God knows your needs, and I want you that as I pray that you will agree with me because there is power in, in prayer. One can put a 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000, and so on. So in, in groups, we can uh, demolish the works of the devil that are trying to uh, discourage people today, that are trying to put so much fear in, 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 their, in their lives and in their hearts. So we need, to, um, uh, we need to pray about that. So anyway, so Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we join our hearts. Lord, your, your people, oh God. We thank you, Father, for your word here today of encouragement. Thank you, Father, that our faith is being perked up because we need faith to pray, oh God. And without faith, we can't really please you. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now we ask, Lord, for wreck, oh God. You know what he's going through there in Mississauga for Jack and his family in Ontario, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you will meet their needs, oh God, all their families and their friends. We pray, oh God, for uh, Hilda's husband. Thank you, Father, that you answer prayer, and uh, he's at home now, but God, we continue to pray for him. Oh God, I pray, God, that you will draw him closer unto you in this hour. We pray for Hilda, God, that you will just anoint him. And Father, strengthen her, God, and meet her needs as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, we continue to ask for Judy and Ken. What a lovely couple, Father. They have done so much for you over the years, and they're still doing things for you even now, holding prayer meetings and, and reaching out to the lost and reaching out to people, and people call them for advice and so on. I pray, Father God, for the physical state, oh God, I pray that you will heal them, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, heal their bodies, strengthen them, Keep them, Father, for a long time. And, Father, let the best of their life be now and the years to come. My God, we need, we need the fathers and the mothers, O oh God, that will pour into the hearts of the younger ones. O oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus. I release the anointing of God upon them and upon all the seniors and all the people that know God. Father, strengthen them. Bless them, Father God. Encourage them. Raise them up, oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that they will feel 30 years younger. All of them, Father, even those that come here, Doreen and all of them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for all seniors, oh God, that you will strengthen their bodies by your spirit that lives within them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against pain. I come against fears. I came against loneliness. I came against, oh my God, there's so much loneliness. God, God, wants to, God, God wants you to come to him and he wants to fulfill that. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, heal their bodies. Heal them emotionally, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, let them not fear during this time, but God help them to pray and to intercede in this hour, Father, that their relationship with you will grow in a mighty way, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for the friends of the, of the School of Discipleship that have come to be with us here in the past year. Father, you know every single one of them. I pray, God, that you will bless their business, that you will bless their jobs. Some of them have lost their jobs. Father God, in the name of Jesus, let your provision be with them, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And have your way, my Lord. Let us all be in you, that you may provide supernaturally in a time of need, in the time of famine, in the time of maybe, you know, being the, the world being so confused and all of that. So, Father, meet the needs of the School of Discipleship students, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And those, oh God, that we know, Father, in this city that are struggling, my Lord, oh, our friends, those that we know and come in contact, for those that are with you, those that are struggling, those that are backsliding, oh God, those that are living in sin, my God, have your way, pull them out, Father. Pull them out of their sin, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And let the fear of God grip their hearts, my Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. That they will return to you, my Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Fire us up, O oh God, with the true fire, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, God, for Taylor, O oh God, for the restoration of that family situation, Father God. Reach him. You know where he lives. You know where he has. 
Oh God, in the name of Jesus, touch them, Father. Remove, oh God, the, the lies and the deception of the enemy. And we pray for restoration. We pray, God, that woes will come down in the name of Jesus Christ. That you will visit him and his family. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Glory for Naaman in Ontario, God. In the name of Jesus, continue to bless the family, my God. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your healing touch. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your, uh, for your wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for your direction. And Father, now we pray for jobs and finances, oh God, which is everybody's afraid, oh God, of where the economy is going and all of that. But God, help us to abide in you. And to say the same thing that the Jehoshaphat said. Our eyes, our eyes are upon you, O God. Hallelujah. And when we learn, Father, to have our eyes upon you, you know. To, you know, the Bible says, perfect peace have them whose mind stayed on thee. And Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak peace to the storms of people's life right now in the name of Jesus. I calm the storms in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your provision for those that have lost their jobs. Give them direction. Lord, that they will have food, shelter, that they will have their needs met. Those that have kids, I pray for your provision for their families and their kids, for rent, for mortgages, for all of these things, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Hallelujah. And, and your grace is sufficient for us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I release your provision, my God, into people's homes and into people's lives. Oh God, meet them, oh God, where they're at today, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, for the churches, oh God, Lord, there is no congregations coming together. We pray for the church leaders, Lord, that they will go to that prayer room and come with the word of the Lord in this hour for God's people, oh God, that they will lead the congregation with thus said the Lord, with the word that will encourage, that the word that will, that will, uh, that will unite them in the name of Jesus in times of need, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray for people to return to God in this hour. Thank you for the many that are calling upon you in this nation. Thank you, Lord, for the many that are calling upon you all over this world, my God. All different faiths, all different denominations. The religious, oh God, the backsliders are calling on you. And I thank you for that, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Bring them home. Bring them home, my God, in the name of Jesus. Bring our loved ones home, Father. Bring those that don't know the Lord, our parents, our, our, our brothers, our sisters, our sons and daughters, our grandkids, oh God, our great-grandkids, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let salvation come to them, my God, in Jesus' name, that none will be taken by the world and by the powers of the enemy, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against the powers of hell that will come against the families of God represented of those that are here in this word today, O oh God. Bless their home, bless their families, save them, deliver them, provide for them, heal them, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We pray for mental illness, Lord. There is so much mental illness in this world today. Heal mental illness, Father God. Father, that they will be that they will wake up made whole by the power of Almighty God. And shall glory, hallelujahs, because of what you have done, Father. Many know you, and yet they struggle with mental illness, oh God. I come against bipolar, schizophrenia, oh God, any imbalance, anything like that. Oh God, the people that are taking medication, anxieties and fears and, and torments and all of these things and abuse and all of those things, oh God. Heal them, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Be made whole by the power of Almighty God. Be made whole by the power of God. Marriages, Father. Lord, their, their, their marriage is struggling now. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will meet those needs, O oh God, that you will keep marriage strong through this time, that they will not grow apart, but, Lord, that they will grow together, my God, that will pray together and, and, and see themselves through these times, O oh God. 
be with families, Father. Bless the families, O God. Lord, that in the moments of chaos, of, of famine, Lord, we can turn our eyes upon you, O God, and find direction. And the Spirit of God will lead us and guide us and tell us what to do, O God. So be with homes and marriages, O God. Hallelujah. Uh, for Janet, uh, Vanessa's friend, I heard that she's watching today. Bless her, my God, in the name of Jesus. You know her needs. You know everything about her. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, meet her needs, oh, God. Uh, her family, her loved ones, uh, her kids, if she has any, oh, God. Let the blessing of God and let her be turned unto you, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah, Father. We thank you. We continue to pray for Canada, for Italy. For the USA, Iran, UK, and so many other countries of the world that have been affected by this virus. My God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you are in control. Thank you, Lord, that your will will be done. Thank you, Father, that this virus will pass. Oh, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray those that have been tested positive all over the world. My God, in the name of Jesus. Let your healing touch come upon them, oh God. And let this virus disappear by the power of Almighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we pray for those, Lord, that are not taking precautions. For those that don't really care and don't think that this is real, my God. Congregating themselves in beaches and parks and all of these things, oh God. And even churches in the United States, oh God, rebelling against, uh, against what they've been called to do to stay away and, and use the distance and all of that. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Bring order to this world through this time, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that we will all realize that the best place for us to be right now is in the presence of Almighty God, is to return to the one that created us, to the Savior and Lord. Hallelujah. For in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray for those that, that, that have a need right now, that maybe we didn't mention them, oh God. Right now, reach out. Just reach out to your hand towards, uh, towards the, the screen right now. Right now, Father, you know their needs. You know everything about them. And right now, I release your power right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I release your power. Meet every need in the, the listener's life and their families and the loved ones. So, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. I speak healing, spiritually healing, uh, physical healing, uh, emotional healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for provision, Father. I pray, God, that in the midst of all of this, God, that all there will be no lack. That's right. That's the word, that there will be no lack, oh God, that all of their needs will be met by the power of Almighty God in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, I release your anointing. I release your power. Meet every need, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, for those that lost jobs, get, get them something. Father God, in the name of Jesus, guide, guide them and direct them. Oh God, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, I came against every oppression, every oppression in the lives, every spirit of fear in the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak peace right now in the midst of the storm. So God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, receive the peace of Almighty God. Let your storms be calm now. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, let them find wisdom in this hour. For the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. And Father, for those that have come to know you today, that have surrendered their lives to you, I pray, God, that they will write us, that they will call a Christian or whatever, that they will begin, Lord, their journey with you, leaving the world behind. Lord, they have tried it their way, but it didn't work, oh God. And I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, that Lord, now you will feed them. You will, you will help them grow spiritually, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So meet every need. Father, for those that are single. Father God, I, two is better than one. I feel that people got out there, God. Hallelujah. They're lonely, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for your provision as well. Hallelujah. To, to have a friend, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that will be spiritually stronger than us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you, Father, for this time. Glory be to God. 
Glory be to God. Oh, the presence of Almighty God, the power of God, the provision of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in things of heaven, earth, and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God our Father. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Every knee will bow. Every knee. And as they're bowing now all over the world, they're bowing down to you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. In a cry of help, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for joining us today. All oh, the power of God, just continue to pray. Spend some time with God tonight. Go and sleep with Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the Spirit of God minister to you. Hallelujah. Wake up with praises in your heart. And, uh, and thank God for his peace. Hallelujah. Uh, and continue to pray. Continue to pray for others. You know, the best prayer is praying for others. You know, if you can concentrate 80% of your prayer life praying for others and 20% on, on you, uh, you'll, you'll see the difference. You know, because when we play 80% for us, and then 20% for others, then it's not a good balance. You know, we're too selfish. We're too, well, too uh, self-focused and that, you know, we got to live for others. Jesus Christ came not to be served, but he came to serve. Blessed, blessed is the giver. The, you know, it, it's, there's, it's more blessed to give than to receive. So let's give our time of prayer for these countries, uh, for people that have been uh, tested positive, for families, uh, for families that have lost a loved one through these things and all of that, people that are sick with cancer and these things, pray for them. You know, you know. So, uh, you know, somebody once told me, I uh, met a Jewish fellow, and, and he told me that they don't pray for themselves. And I said, what do you mean you don't pray for yourself? I said, well, if we pray for the world and for others, God will look after us. You know, and no, no wonder uh, the Jewish nation has been blessed over the years. You know, because, you know, they, they probably know how to pray, you know. <laughs> I don't know, they have the, they have the, the strategy of, of praying. <laughs> Amen. I mean, they're still waiting for the Messiah, though, you know. So, uh, uh, but the Messiah has come. Amen. And thank God for Messianic Jews, you know, that they have found Jesus to be the Messiah. Hallelujah. They found them years later, but man, they, they found them. And, and God is doing wonderful things in Israel and with the Jewish nation and the Arab nation in Iran, the underground church. God is doing all over the world. The Spirit of God is moving, saints. Let it move in your life. Let it move in your family. Let it move in your heart. Hallelujah. And, and let, let there be a flow of Him to others, to your kids and all of that. Hallelujah. I saw that Vanessa came. Lord bless her son, Javon, in the name of Jesus Christ. What a young, mighty young man. God's hand is upon his life. Oh, God bless him. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, let him be a voice in the years to come. Oh, God, get a hold of his life, my God, and heal him. Deliver him, oh God, and place the anointing of God upon his life and even among all other youth in Jesus' name. Be with the youth of today. In the name of Jesus. Be with the young people, my God, in the name of Jesus. I call all pastors to, to, to reach out to the young people. They might act cool, but they're all afraid. They're all afraid. And we need to pray for our young kids. Hallelujah. People in your church, pray for them. Amen. Because they're afraid. They're afraid. I mean, I have three boys and they're concerned. You know, even though, even though they know God, they're concerned. You know, a couple of days ago, I had a wonderful time with the family, and we spoke about the end times, and, and, you know, we're all concerned, and anything can happen. The rapture can happen today, tomorrow, next day. God can take us and leave the rest, seven years of tribulation and whatnot. Anything can happen. You know, it's very unpredictable. Why? Because we are powerless without God. The world has lost control. And God now has control. Let's turn to him. Amen. 
So God bless you. Love you. My voice is gone there a little bit. I'm ready for Sunday. I tell you, I don't know what God is going to do Sunday, but the word that I have is so prophetic and is so in time. It's going to blow your minds. Amen. So love you, love you, love you, love you. This is Brother John from Revival Hour, from uh, the Fire Hall School of Discipleship. And uh, we're fighting for you. We're fighting for you unselfishly. We're fighting for you. Hallelujah. Because we are the church and God is bringing us together in Jesus' holy and precious name. So be blessed in Jesus' name and let your light shine as you go out there to the grocery store or your neighbors. Pray for them in Jesus' name. Love you. Thanks for joining us. And uh, pass this video to others so that they can watch it. God bless you. Bye for now.